There's a lot of new players in this market. Millions of people have come into the equity markets the last few years. They've only really known sort of good times since the pandemic lows in equities. They've never invested or even lived through inflation. What are some of your guiding principles for staying calm in an uncertain world right now? <laughs> Thank you, Brian, for that calm introduction. So I, I would tell people first that in almost every year, the market has a correction of 10% or more, except for last year. Last year was when everyone flooded into the market as new investors, and we didn't really see that. So this is their experience. The market's down 10% from the high in January 3rd. The Nasdaq is down more. There are 138 stocks. This is interesting, I think with market caps of over $5 billion that are down 40% or more, 40% or more from their 12-month high. So those stocks have been in a real bear market, and those are often the stocks that new investors have bought, you know, whether it's Robinhood, Peloton, DraftKings, you know, et cetera, Moderna, Novavax. So there are opportunities out there. You need to, though, be calm about when you step back in because we don't know exactly where the bottom is. This is the time to look, make your list, think about at what price you would add to a position or enter a position. Many of the stocks on that list were way too high, but there are companies that have great fundamentals where their multiples are now below market multiples. I mean, as an example, PayPal. Uh, that stock was trading perhaps in the stratosphere. It's come down to earth. It sells for a multiple on next year's earnings that's less than Coke or Pepsi. And that's on that list. Yeah. So managements have given very, very kind of calm, what? Uh, dis disappointing guidance. OK, go on. Yeah, I'm trying to listen, Kerry. Let's let's before we get to the other picks, I, I we, let's just stay on PayPal for a second. I don't understand what's going sure. on at PayPal. I mean, everything you buy online, you have the option. PayPal is there. And often it gets clicked, right? Pay by credit card or maybe Apple Pay, but PayPal is there. The business seemed to be expanding. E-commerce is growing. It seems like an easy play. Clearly, it's been anything but. What do you think is happening with PayPal? Yeah, well, if you look at the chart of PayPal and next to the chart of FIS, you know, that all of the payment companies have had just this incredible collapse in their stock prices. Their businesses have grown. They had tremendous you know, pandemic years because everyone shopped online and this accelerated the growth at PayPal. When they gave guidance, you know, it was modest and the market has penalized every company, whether it's Netflix, Facebook, PayPal, even Home Depot yesterday. Home Depot came off, you know, a year or so where everyone in America was building their own deck. And they reported a strong quarter over all those incredible gains a year ago and guided, you know, somewhat modestly. And the stock came down more than 8 percent. So this has been the type of environment where investors want to hear great news. If they don't, they take apart the stock. And in payments, it's been much worse. So every name within that category. Now look at, you know, Shopify is another example. It's down, I think, 55 percent from its peak. So they've gotten killed. And we think that, you know, within that wreckage, there are some names that are very interesting. Yeah. And one thing we do in good times and bad. Well, my son has a book. It's called Everybody Poops, but we won't go into that. But what we all what we all do in <laughs> good not. times and bad times <laughs> is produce waste. Uh, and you think WCN sure. and maybe some of the other waste management companies. You see where I was going with that, Carrie. Don't worry that the waste management I companies I, I got you. are going to be maybe not maybe not recession proof, but maybe uh, Putin proof. Yeah, exactly. So there are names, you know, I put on my list. Waste management is a company that's growing nicely. It's domestic. It, it focuses on sort of mid-sized cities. There are inflation clauses in most of their contracts. And if you think about the pandemic, we didn't produce within commercial settings the type of trash that we normally do. That's starting to come back. So we think that Waste Connection is the type 
of stock that performs well in an uncertain environment, particularly one with international, you know, kind of stirrings and ramifications. Uh, I also put CME Group on that because that's a company that gets tremendous benefit from, you know, volatility in the markets. They have a big interest um, uh, rate sort of index and their volumes go up uh, dramatically during periods where interest rates rise. They also do futures and on their oil index, and they also trade every type of crisp, uh, cryptocurrency. So we think that's, a, a, you know, an idea for investors looking for something that kind of fits this volatile time. Um, S&P Global, they measure all finan financial data. Yep. There's a lot of it around there, lots of uncertainty. Finishing up with, with um, consolidated IHS market, and that will add um, a, a lot to the bottom line and synergies that we don't think the market appreciates. And, and, and even Amazon I put on the list because the stocks underperformed for a year and a half in terms of um, accelerating the, um, the use of Amazon during the pandemic. That definitely happened. It's, it's around 40 times um, earnings, so that multiple has come way down, but it continues to grow very nicely. Yeah, you know, you brought up S&P Global. I mean, we talk about the S&P 500 standard and pours. This is a giant company. I don't think a lot of people understand the size and scope. Obviously, I'm going to be at the Zero Week Conference in Houston a couple of weeks. By the way, it's going to be huge. That's IHS Market. That you know, they're, they're buying that. Right. This company is a beast when it comes to financial data, financial information, news. It's, it's kind of the, the publicly traded Bloomberg in, in a way. It, it, exactly. And when you, you think about you know, energy markets, which right now everyone's focused on because of Russia, and they own plats, and, and that provides a lot of energy data, but prescription data, all, all types of you know, financial health care commodities, it's just a behemoth that the market has, you know, ha, has not, we believe, really understood what the synergies will result from, from that acquisition are going to be. So, yeah, we think it's really good.